Brian Brock. Brian Brock. How awkward is that saying? <laughs> Linebacker. Syracuse. <laughs> In the eight league, giving will will come back around to you. It's not the purpose you do it, but it's a byproduct. Like the more positive energy you put out there, I believe in this anyways, the more positive energy you get back. The more you give, you know, we've all heard the saying, the more you get. That's happened to me time and time again. And the crazy thing is when I was younger, I was way more selfish. Like the things that I was doing were only for me. The money I was making was only for myself. I didn't have a family to feed or responsibilities to, to shift that money to. So anything creatively I was doing was for self-fulfillment. And then the money was the byproduct of that that allowed me to continue. But if you strip out the money for a second and you just go through the process of creating and then giving and what comes back, man, most of the things I've ever succeeded in in life is probably from giving first. No expectation. Um, and I think it's a lot of our responsibilities as now older people in the industry or in our communities to, to lead by example. Um, no one needs to be a role model, but it's so easy to, to give, right? It costs you nothing. And if you're worried about finances, like, like that you're not going to make enough because you're volunteering your time or the time you're spending on giving to, to someone in need is taking away from the time that you could be earning something. That's just a balancing act of life. You, you, you choose your own moral compass at that point. Like, what do you value over something else? How much is one thing important over the other? And in all reality, like, balance will always fluctuate. It's never going to be in the middle the whole time. But as you grow older, man, that balance starts to get way easier. And if you truly do have the ability to give and you want to give, there's nothing stopping you. I'm still open to someone else teaching me something so that I could skip a step or that I could maneuver in a way that I haven't thought of before. So knowing that I never had a mentor, knowing that there's young people today that don't have mentors, don't have people in their family um, that are in a position to, to empower and, and positively motivate or even support their, their child's dream, like that's all I need to know because it's, it's a job that's got to be filled. And I would do this shit if I wasn't getting paid. I still, I, I still do shit for free all the time. So the, the idea of like giving once again, uh, I don't think I'll ever stop. And, and I, hope, I hope there's a ripple effect from that. I hope other people see what I do and see what the people around me do for everyone, not just for ourselves. And I hope it helps, helps them pass it on. Yeah, I think social media is a gift and a curse, to be honest, because on one hand, you have all this amazing access to things that you never had access to before. There's inspiration at, at your fingertips. I love that for art's sake and creativity. But then on the flip side, you know, it's like a scrolling reality TV show. And I fucking hate reality TV shows. They're not real. And the side that they're choosing to show is a side that's that's not a world that I want to be a part of. And it, it's a lot of negativity. It's a lot of insecurity. It's a lot of the things that people get stuck in, in in grade school and high school and never grow out of because they never had a proper support system. So now it gets glorified. I hate the glorification of everything that, that's negative online. Um, it, it gives people that don't deserve a voice a voice. And I'm not saying everyone shouldn't be able to say what they want to say. All I'm saying is that they're abusing the platform. I'm like, I only want to work 28 hours a week. Over the course of seven days, that's an average of four hours a day. Now that doesn't mean I work four hours a day every day. The last two days I've put in seven hours. Today I'm, I'm clocking seven, almost eight. But what that means is I'm, I'm aware of my time over a seven day time period. And over those seven days, I make it very hard to go over 28 hours. And the crazy thing is by me putting that value on my time and saying I only want to do this many hours a week, it now puts me in a position to be focused, efficient, and not fuck around. And it doesn't mean I was goofing off or doing things I shouldn't have been doing, but when you set a goal for yourself and you're like, I'm not passing 28 hours a week because this is the life I want to live, it comes back to those three words, quality of life. I'm not going to change anything for that. 
you know, like the three most important words that I live my life by are simple. Quality of life. You know, I learned at an early age that there's something that is is so important and it's called balance. And the balance is what gives you the quality of life. You need to find self-fulfillment, but you still need those rewards to be paid and, and you know, be a part of society. But the reality of quality of life, man, it boils down to like, why are you even doing this? What are you doing it for? What are you getting out of it? And what are you giving? Is the world changing because of this or does it not really matter? Is it something that's gonna change your world? Because maybe it's worth it. But I live by those three words, man, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ever erase those words from my vocabulary. Yeah, I think um, when it comes to insecurities, most of those things in my life were taken care of at an early age because I grew up in a time when listening to hip hop wasn't popular. So I got made fun of for being into that music. I got made fun of for dressing the way I dressed. I got in fights because of the culture that I was a part of, even though I may not look in terms of my skin tone, what the predominant force is within that culture. The fucked up thing is everyone that comes from that side of the world embraced me more than the people that look like me. Yeah, so being adopted was single-handedly the best thing that's ever happened to my life. But I didn't know that when I was younger. See, when you're on the come up, you know, something like being adopted forces you to ask yourself real questions like, am I good enough? Or why didn't my parents want me? And you're forced to have this chip on your shoulder while you start to maneuver through life. But in all honesty, being adopted allowed me the ability to maneuver through life with touch points on a lot of different groups of people. And those different groups of people, because I never felt like I truly fit in in any one group, all those groups ended up allowing me to become a better person. They taught me something that I couldn't learn from just myself or just one group. The ability to share real emotion with someone that's so close to you means that you both are gonna get the best out of that scenario. If you truly want the best for your friends, you're gonna give them the best. There's no yes men or yes women in my circle, and there's a reason for that. We're, critique, uh, we're critiquing each other, we're analyzing each other, we're forcing each other to get better. And if there's moments of pain and struggle, we'll accept those and go through them together. There's never a reason to be alone, especially in a world like today where we're all able to connect. If I could take all my creative ability and lose it tomorrow, like my God-given gifts of, of drawing and seeing things, if I could take all that away tomorrow and change how the world views race, I would do it in a heartbeat. Because everything that I've become is because of the acceptance of others. And that is predominantly not the race that looks like me. And the power that comes from people connecting over like-mindedness and the unity through shared experiences and the open mind to actually connect bigger and better than what you were or once were, fuck out of here, no one can talk to me. No one can talk to you if, if we connect like that. But the way that it currently is, it's, man, it's mad depressing. That's probably the only thing I'll vent on. <laughs>